<laughs> and if you're afraid of public speaking, that's not such a big deal. But if you're afraid of death, uh, we need to talk. And that's what we're talking about today. So stay tuned to this, this 40 minutes of, of worship and praise as we address the greatest thing that we need to face in life. And that's death. Exactly. No options, right? Yeah, exactly. You can't say no, don't want to do it. Um, welcome to church, everybody. Happy Sunday. And whenever you are, wherever you are watching this during the week, anyway, it's just a day to take some time out, take a deep breath, pray, ask God to lead you. You know, we're in the season of Lent yep. now. We're well into it. We're uh, uh, almost a week, no, over a week into it, a week and a half into Lent. Yes. So uh, let's encourage one another. Let's um, be more peaceful. Let's pray more. Let's uh, fast from our bad habits, um, whatever those might be. And let's give more. Give more financially in particular. And if you don't give to this ministry, give to some ministry. It's really important for your soul, for your being, for who you are to become a giver and to give to a Christian church that supports missions, that's helping people. And uh, anyway, welcome to church. Yeah, thank you. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity that we have to come together through these various mediums that we have to be able to worship you. And so thank you for bringing us together. May your light shine in our hearts, in our souls, in our minds, in the world. And may you extinguish the darkness that continues to try to penetrate and create fear and distrust and uh, separation and anxiety. And so with you before us lighting the way, we know we cannot fail. One thing we know is that God always wins. And that is our promise and that we hold on to and that we realize and understand. So we thank you, Lord, for everything. We praise your name always. Amen. Amen. Wow. Yeah, yeah the world's trying to separate all of us. By, yes, it by is. By color, by creed, by religion. It's like this separation is getting larger and larger. And as Christians, we want to discourage that. Jesus came to bring people together, to bring freedom, to bring life, to bring just the real, real life and peace and love. So uh, just keep that in mind. And again, it's Lent, the season of Lent. If you want to look that up afterwards, it's really important. It's the 40 days prior to Easter Sunday, which, of course, is the greatest celebration that we have as Christians. It's the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So. Well, we want to invite you to attend our life-changing nine-day event as we travel through the Holy Land. This will literally change your life. What is it? Eight days. Eight days. Oh, <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> sorry about that. No, well, it's nine days actually. It's the twentieth through the through the eighth. So you start 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. Mm -hmm. Nine days. Okay. <laughs> nine days. He always likes to count things that way. We're going to be yeah, on the airplane I, on the twentieth. So do you know what? This is a very good illustration for. For the difference in this in in a passage of scripture that we're going to be talking good, about today. Good, but anyway, back and... to the Holy Land. <laughs> June twentieth through twenty eighth this year, it's coming up. In fact, we're going to be cutting this off soon because they need the final count on hotel rooms over there because this is a busy season. It's always busy in the Holy Land, and if you're thinking it's not a good time for me, you're never going to have a perfect time to go to the Holy Land. It doesn't exist. It doesn't the exist. The perfect time never is there. So make up your mind, yeah. make a decision, and go do this. There's nothing more important than going to the Holy Land. It'll change your life. It'll change the way you read the Bible. It'll make the history of the Bible come alive in your life, in your heart, your soul. You'll be, come back a completely uh, better version, a greater person than you would have been had you not gone. So uh, anyway. So this trip is an educational experience. It is a life-changing experience. And if you need to borrow money to do it, do so. And just like if you have to borrow money for an education, you do it. And the reason is because it is life-changing. It's something that you need to do. The earlier you do it in your life, the better it right. is. And so do whatever it takes to join us 
And so you can go to our website and you'll see a promote, you'll see a page that pops up right away to uh, encourage you to, to attend. And uh, it, our website is drshuler.org. So just go to drshuler.org and uh, you'll be able to find all the links to, to be able to join us and, and make it happen. Yeah, that's a great point. This is a learning experience. It's a cultural experience. You're learning history. Uh, it's obviously a deeply spiritual experience. <clears throat> You're not borrowing money to go and lay on a beach someplace and do nothing. No. You'd be borrowing money to further enhance your education and into, into wholeness, into the whole person that you are, because we're body, mind, and spirit. We spend a lot of money on the mind, and we don't necessarily spend that much money on our spirit, and it's time to do so. So I strongly encourage you to go to the Holy Land anyway, if not with us, with somebody else, as soon as you possibly can. The advantage of ours is it is truly a spiritual journey. Uh, we're not there to see all the beautiful things that Israel has done over the last 50 years. It's a great country. They've done amazing things, but that's not what we're, we're there for. We're there to follow in the footsteps of Jesus. We're going to go to Bethlehem. We're going to go to Nazareth. We're going to go to Jerusalem. We're going to go to Galilee. Mm -hmm. We're going to go to walk the Via Della Rosa. We're going to be Baptize. baptism in the Jordan River. We're going to have a communion in the garden tomb it's you can't it's you can sit and look at all the books in the world and you can look at every single picture and every single video but it's not going to be anything close to the experience of being there in person smelling the smells feeling Absolutely. it and touching it and that's why you need to get to the holy land the sooner the better and we're leaving on June 20th. So that's enough about that. Exactly. And you want to go with us. Robert said you yeah. go with anybody, but here's the thing too. You never know when you're at the end of your life. You really don't. And I know you're going to no. talk more about death, Yeah. but um, not to, not to scare anybody or say you're going to die soon, but you never know because you said it's better to go at the beginning of your life when you're younger, the younger yeah. you go, the more years you have to carry this beautiful experience with you. And I understand that. But the point is we never know. We never know. You know, my very own father died in a car accident at 40 years old. He was the most vibrant, healthy, happy, outgoing guy, had everything going for him and suddenly gone. So, uh, you know, we just don't know. And there's many mm -hmm. stories like that, many tragic stories in, in people's lives of people listening to us. And you just don't know. But if you are a Christian, if you're a follower of Jesus, maybe even if you're on the fence and you're thinking, is this Jesus guy real? You go over there, you will know because you know, because you know, because you know that those sites, the history of the Bible is absolutely 100% real. And yes, Jesus is the Messiah. So that's it. Son of the living God. Son of the living so God. read the scripture today and I'll be back. Okay. Today's scripture is selected verses starting from Matthew 17, verse 1. After six days, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, the brother of James, and he led them up a high mountain by themselves. There he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as the light. Just then there appeared before them Moses and Elijah, talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Lord, is it good for us to be here? If you wish, I will put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, a bright cloud covered them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell face down on the ground, terrified. But Jesus came out and touched them. Get up, he said. Don't be afraid. When they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus instructed them, Don't tell anyone what you've seen until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The disciples asked him, Why then do the teachers of the law say that Elijah must come first? And Jesus replied, To be sure, Elijah comes and will restore all things. But I tell you, Elijah has already come, 
and they did not recognize him, but have done to him everything they wished. In the same way, the Son of Man is going to suffer at their hands. Then the disciples understood that he was talking to them about John the Baptist. When they came together in Galilee, he said to them, the Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men. They will kill him, and on the third day, he will be raised to life. And the disciples were filled with grief. Lord God, um, this reminds us that as the disciples were confused, we too are confused today about so many things. And Jesus wants us to trust him. He had to say over and over to his disciples, trust me, trust me, trust me, believe me, believe me, there's a plan. And as hard as it is to understand, there's a plan for our life. Even in the darkest times, even in the greatest tragedies, there's a plan up ahead. We just need to keep our eyes focused on you, Lord. Thank you for the season of Lent where we can bring our prayers, our fasting, and our giving in ways we've never done before. We can take our faith and we can make it even better, even stronger. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Welcome back. <laughs> uh, thank you for reading for, mm -hmm. for, the, for the prayer. So one of the things we do every Sunday morning is we collect an offering. And the way we do that is we have a website that you can go to. It's drschuler.org, and that's the easiest way. And you'll find a button on there that says, I'd like to give. And we want to encourage you to do that to support our ministry because we continue to share the good news of Jesus Christ and the truth of the reality of, of, the, of the situations that the world finds itself in today. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are a ministry that uh, understands that we are in a spiritual battle and the spiritual battle is against light and darkness. And uh, we are promoting the light as we heard Donna read about today. Jesus Christ comes and is radiant and extremely bright. And that brightness eliminates all the darkness. So uh, anyway, we want to encourage you to support this ministry and if not this ministry, make sure you support some ministry because it's more important that you give than it is that we receive. Because in giving, you receive. And uh, so you have to choose who you want to support, what ministries you want to participate with. And I want you to know that we are awake. Our eyes are open. We understand what's happening with three-letter agencies across the, the board as far as uh, are, as, as far as um, uh, the, the battle goes. And so if you support this ministry, you know you're supporting somebody who's on a similar page if that's the page you're on. And uh, chances are, if you're listening to this ministry, you're on that page. So uh, we have been uh, patriots for forever. I remember back in the 80s, and the 90s, when I was in a, in a big, big ministry, we had a huge cathedral that, sa that sat 3,000 people. We would raise a flag that was 90 feet tall, a U.S. flag, and it was absolutely spectacular. You can go to YouTube and Google that, and you can see what it was like. But um, we have been patriotic ever since, remain patriotic, and believe that that uh, God wants to make America great. And as a result of that, he will continue to support his people as we move forward to, to embrace his love for mankind. So a couple other ways you can get back to the giving. Yeah. So go to drschuler.org and you spell that D-R-S-C-H-U-L-L-E-R.org. One word, of course, Dr. Schuler all together, no spaces. And like Robert said, there's a drop down menu. You can click on it on the top right side. It says, I'd like to give. And if you don't want to give that way, you can use Venmo, Robert Schuler Ministries Venmo, or you can write a check and mail it to Robert Schuler Ministries at 26 Canyon Island Drive, Newport Beach, California, 92660. 
And if you miss that, I don't blame you. You probably aren't ready to write anything down. <laughs> Scroll to the bottom of drschuler.org. Make sure you sign up for our website too. We want to collect our your emails. Name, our emails. We don't send a lot out, but no. here's the thing. We're going to, we are working on our website, drschuler.org. We are going to be broadcasting primarily through there. We're going to be putting up a lot more programming and there's already a lot on there. You can go through and see videos that have been on there for years. Short, short videos, 30 seconds, one minute videos. If that's all your attention span can, can allow, there's many, many hundreds of them. And then lots of these sermon type things, these programs, Sunday morning services. And we also have something called The Call, which is an interview type uh, service once a month on the 15th of every month at 6 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. But there's lots to see and do, but please give us your name and your email address in case we suddenly poof off social media, <laughs> because you never know. We're on six different platforms here, but you just don't know. You just never know. We might say something they don't like. So please sign up for our uh, emails and uh, We'd love to stay in touch with you. We don't send out a lot. We should be sending up more. In fact, we just don't have time. It's Robert yeah. and I. So I think that's all I want to say. Um, and again, just scroll to the bottom of drschuler.org, the page, and there's our address again, 26 Canyon Island Drive, Newport Beach, California. That's our mailing address. That's our office and our home. That is not where the church is located. That's important because once in a while, we have somebody show up here at the home. That's not our church. We do have a church at 10 a.m. live here in Newport Beach, California at 100 Civic Center Drive, Newport Beach. It's easy to find. Just look up Robert Schuller Ministries Live Church Service in Newport Beach. Okay. And, and we don't we quit streaming that service because that's someplace where we can talk candidly and openly, and uh, we don't have to worry about anything. So come on out. Yeah. And, and join us in person. We'd and, love to have uh, you. We'd, yeah, great. you'll, you'll enjoy great. great people. Yes. So they're your kind okay. of people. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Donna. Uh -huh. So I'm talking today. We're actually going through the through the book of Matthew in a lot of ways. Not every single verse. It's not a verse by verse um, uh, Bible study that we're going through. But I'm following following the litany of the Reformed Church in America, which I've had forever, of which I've been a member, of which my uh, my my great uncle actually started the classes of California in the in uh, the early 30s. He came out here in 1931 and started a church and in, in a bar of all places because it was the only place he could find to start a church. But that didn't bother him. He's a he was a missionary. He was he was ordained in the 20s. He graduated from Princeton Seminary and went to China in the 20s as a missionary. Uh, his wife got sick, came back, uh, was a missionary to in, in the Plains, uh, working on Indian reservations, doing teaching and the like, and sharing the good news of Jesus. And so what a, an amazing history of an amazing person. But that was my great uncle. Uh, and uh, why did I bring that up? Uh, I brought that up because uh, I'm going through this litany or, or the, the literary calendar as far as what sermons they encourage us to preach. I've never done this before. So the text that they had for today was the one that Donna read, which is known as the Transfiguration, which is a kind of an interesting name. The, the Greek for the word Transfiguration is actually metamorpho. And metamorpho is where we get the word metamorphosis. Metamorphosis is a complete change. Uh, we, we think of metamorphosis as a caterpillar turning into a butterfly, of a, a guppy or a, um, a polywog turning into a frog. We think of metamorphosis as a human being whose life is reborn. They are completely and totally changed. There's a movie that, that came out recently. It's about the Jesus revolution of the 70s. And I grew up in, the, in that. I, in, in here in, in Southern California, I would go to Calvary Chapel where, you would, where we would go and, and hear the testimonies of these young men and these young women whose lives were transformed so dramatically that they went from 
total drug addicts lost in the street and on the verge of death to totally born again, just their lives were changed. And I met numerous young people like that to the point where I felt like my testimony was weak and I felt like, golly, maybe I should go and do some of that so I can have a better testimony. But the fact is, I grew up in the church. My father was a pastor. Uh, from the age of five, I was literally shaking hands with people as they left the church. I was leading worship in my youth group, and I have always had a love for Jesus. So even though my life was changed when I, when I accepted Christ as my personal Lord and Savior, it wasn't such a transformation like it was for many of my friends who grew up in that, whose lives were 100% changed. It was a 180 degree turn from moving away from God, moving away from church, moving away from 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 from, from wholesome re, uh, goodness to everything immoral and unethical and debauchery. And they made a 180 degree turn and came to the light. That's the transformation that took place when Jesus decided he was going to take Peter, James, and John up to a mountain, and he knew what was going to take place up there. The, the, the apostles had no idea. What they knew was that they were grieving. They were grieving the fact that Jesus had told them, and just told them, that he was going to die and that his life would be taken. And as a result of that, these apostles were in the period of grief. So what Jesus did when he took them up to that to, to that mountain and experienced this metamorphosis, his, in, his entire countenance changed. His, and that's why it's called the, the, the uh, transfiguration. He transfigured from the, the man God, the man Jesus, to the divine Jesus. He did that only temporarily. Why? Because he, he was there as fully human to be able to, to relate with people and relate with individuals to give them the opportunity to experience their own metamorphosis. The transfiguration is not for us to look at as a point in history that took place when Jesus went up to Mount Tabor with his three selected apostles and transfigured. What happened when he transfigured? It says that his light shone so bright that it was like day, which it gives us the impression this actually took place at night. It also gives us the impression it took place at night because what Donna read was from the Gospel of Matthew. And this actually is recorded not only in Matthew, but it's also recorded in, in uh, Mark and also recorded in Luke. In fact, in the Gospel of Luke, it specifically says that, that in Luke 9.32, it says, when they became fully awake, and I'm quoting from the New International Version, which is the, which is the, the, the version that I've been reading and studying since the 70s. And the reason I take the New International Version is because the school that I went to was Fuller Theological Seminary. I spent four years studying there. And my professors, all, many of them participated in this translation. So from my perspective, it is the most accurate translation that we have of the Greek and the Hebrew. And so the Greek metamorphosis is translated is is translated here as the the transfiguration. But here in the, in the account of the transfiguration in Luke nine, it says literally, when they became fully awake, and that's something for us to realize. We need to become fully awake. When they became fully awake, they saw His glory. They saw the glory. God. And that's what this is all about. That's the transformation that took place. Jesus temporarily revealed his glory, revealed his divinity, revealed who he was to the apostles. And he did it specifically so that they could realize that his death isn't death at all. 
And that's what you and I have to realize, that death really isn't death. Death is a metamorphosis. It is a transformation that you will take, that I will take, that every single person on planet Earth will take. You can be confident that in the next 100 years, there will be 8 billion people on planet Earth who will die. That probably includes you and me. Unless you're listening to this words and you're only three or four years old, chances are the next 100 years, you will be dead. Question is, do you have to fear death? If you fear death, you have imprisoned yourself to a mental capacity that releases negative emotions and keeps you imprisoned in, in, in a state of fear. I, I have been really bothered over the last couple years specifically about the new catchphrase as far as a, 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 a farewell is concerned. I can't tell you how many people when they, as their farewell will say, be safe. Tell me if you've heard that. I know you have. Be safe. That's the new farewell. Be safe. And I just, it drives me nuts. I'm going, why do I want to be safe? I'm going to be as safe as God wants me to be. I'm not going to go out there and be safe. To be safe means I'm going to stop living. I'm going to lock myself in my room. I'm going to make sure I don't interact with other people. I'm going to make sure that I don't possibly get exposed to some virus that my body, I know, has the ability to withstand. I, and if it doesn't, then I die. And if I die, that's not the end of the world. It is a metamorphosis from this life to the next. That's what this passage of scripture is all about. It's about declaring freedom. Freedom for you, freedom from me, freedom from fear. And it is that freedom that will allow us to do things that we otherwise would not do. If you're consistently living in a security state, you will be imprisoned just like the lions in the zoo. Lions in the zoo have nothing to fear. They've got free medical care. If they have any physical ailments whatsoever, they'll come in and they do the surgeries. They make sure they get the right vitamins. They give them the right diet. They have nothing to worry about as, as far as food is concerned. They don't have to worry about other animals and being bitten by snakes or, or being th thrown across the 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 the, the the terrain by an elephant, they are secure. They have nothing to fear. But they're not free. And if we want a security of not being, uh, facing challenges and not facing death, what we do is we are told a lie that we will be secure if, we follow these rules and follow these regulations, and so be safe. It is a way for the security state to come in and transform, metamorphize us from the spiritual beings that we have been born into by God into the physical beings that they can manipulate and control and enslave. If you want freedom today, it takes place First and foremost, by overcoming the fear of death. St. Saint, Saint Paul, Saint Paul said it this way, O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, death, where is thy victory? It is swallowed up in the cross of Jesus Christ. And when Jesus Christ transfigured on this mount, he is saying to his apostles, you don't have to be afraid of the fact that I'm going to die. We're all going to die. This isn't a point of, of, this is not a time of loss. This is a time of victory. And we are victorious through our death and he, suddenly appearing before him as he's shown in front of his apostles. There was, there was Moses standing there and Elijah. Interesting people to be standing next to him. Here's one of the things we know about Moses. Moses represents the law. Uh, it, uh, Elijah represents the prophets. Here's the other thing about Moses. We know that Moses' body was never buried. 
no one experienced the death of Moses. Moses went up on the mountain, and according to the scriptures in Deuteronomy 34, God buried Moses, and to this day it says, and this is true, we do not know where Moses was buried. So we have this bodiless transformation of Moses. Elijah was actually, the Bible tells us, that Elijah was taken up into a whirlwind in the chariots of fire, and he never died. It's the only person that we know of in the Bible who never died. Why do we have to fear death? We have to fear death if we don't understand the tremendous saving grace of Jesus Christ and that we are going to go to heaven because Jesus revealed his glory to us and we live not by laws, by fulfilling all the laws, but we live in the prophetic word of God that says we receive the grace of Jesus Christ for all who believe in him. Anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord Jesus will be saved. So we have nothing to fear. It's important for us to open our hearts and allow God in. God doesn't live in our hearts unless he's invited. Jesus doesn't live in our hearts unless he's invited. There is the famous painting of Jesus standing outside the door. Uh, I believe it's the, the I, I didn't plan on saying this, so I'm referring from my memory, but I think it was a painting by Durer who Jesus is on the outside and you can see him ready to, to knock on the door. And the most interesting thing about that painting is that there is no way to open the door from the outside. The door can be only be opened from the inside because Jesus doesn't come and demand to be let in. He says, any man who will open his heart, open his door, I will come in, I will be with him. What faith does for us is it says, I will open the doors of my heart, open the doors of my soul, open the doors of my mind, and allow Jesus to come in to dwell with me and dwell within and take away any fear of death. Are you, if you are afraid of death today, you can conquer that fear by inviting Jesus into your life and coming to the realization and the full knowledge and the full and the full transformation, a metamorphosis, a personal metamorphosis by simply declaring Jesus Christ is Lord. And the Bible specifically says that anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord Jesus will be saved. And <laughs> you will live forever. Suddenly, Jesus was on the mountain, and there's Moses standing next to him and Elijah. And later throughout this, if you were to continue to read through the, the passage of, of Matthew 17, it, re, it, it reads uh, that all things are possible if you only believe, if you only have enough faith. And that is the truth that Jesus came to save, to give us this message. Believe it, understand it, embrace it, wake up. When they were fully awake, it said, they saw his glory. That's the transformation of Jesus. He temporarily showed who he was from, the divini from a divinity point of view. And it was a small window of the future. And the, and the chapter of 17 concludes with Jesus again saying, we are going to Jerusalem where I will suffer at the hands of the authorities. We too may suffer at the hands of authorities. We will find different, we will experience different tribulations and, and stress. We are never promised that it's going to be a nice, cushy life. That's never the promises in the scriptures. The promises are that God will never leave you. You will live forever uh, spiritually, that you will, you will 
be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you'll experience a metamorphosis from fear to courage, that you will no longer have to fear death. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, death, where is thy victory? It is swallowed up in the name and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have just continued to, to give us your son, Jesus Christ, in a powerful, wonderful way to transform human lives. So as we open our hearts and our minds to you, empower us with your courage that we might experience the freedom to, to be able to, to go out in the world and, and do courageous things and experience life and to live. And so we live today in the full knowledge and realization that you are our God and we are your people. That when the time comes, you will bring us home just like you did with Moses, just like you have done from the, from the beginning of time, that you know exactly how many days we have, how many breaths we will take. So help us to live, O oh Lord. We love you and we praise your name always and forever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord grant you his peace. You're lying down and you're rising up in your labor and in your leisure, in your laughter and in your tears until you come to stand before Jesus in that day in which there is no sunset and no dawning. Amen. God is blessing you, everybody. Go forth and live. Bye-bye.